Hey guys, welcome back. Today we want to talk about a very serious subject and that is proposed gun control that is going to be hitting the U.S. Congress here very soon because of recent events. There was a shooting in Buffalo, New York, and then also a recent shooting in a school in New Verde, Texas. And I am with Jason here today. And we just recently returned from Houston, and so we had a lot of time to sit in the car uh, from Northwest Indiana to Houston and back and to discuss these recent events and proposed legislation to somehow prevent future tragedies as this from taking place. Mm -hmm. And we came to the conclusion once again that there really isn't anything that we can do in terms of gun control that would stop these shootings. It seems like our politicians, once again, are pulling out the old tried and true, same old arguments that do absolutely nothing to change outcomes just for feel-good politics to achieve their political agenda, which is ultimately disarming the American public completely. Absolutely. I mean, they've always done that. You know, you picture the assault weapons ban. That was a, a feel-good thing, right? You know, it did absolutely nothing. And then folks that, that seem to think that, well, you know, you don't really need that stuff. Well, the moment they start looking at your bolt-action hunting rifle as some type of dangerous sniper rifle or your, you know, bird-hunting shotgun as some kind of tactical room-clearing device, you know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't matter. Right. Their, their agenda is total annihilation of the Second Amendment and elimination of all firearms. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban picking up every one of them, M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. You don't have to look any further than Venezuela. Mm -hmm. They disarmed their population before their communist takeover that wound up in the complete destruction of their country. You need to look no further than Canada. Canada has been imposing incremental gun laws, and just in the news recently, they're looking at outright banning handgun sales all future sales. It's undetermined what they're going to do with people that currently own them. Right now, they're just going to stop the transfer of firearms, handguns, and then banning anything that loads itself, right? They right. already have a magazine ban for rifles. I believe it's uh, five rounds for handguns. It's 10 rounds. Handguns, they were, there was some talk of making it a five-round magazine, but now it's apparent that the, the law is just going to outright ban the sale or transfer of handguns. And then they want to do away with, you know, whatever they deem to be an assault rifle. I'm doing the air quotes because we know that's a made up term. Right. And so we see these other countries that don't have a second amendment and we watch the, the progression of gun control. It's always masked under sensible re regulations, sensible gun control laws, sensible things. Like right now that the, the anti-gunners are talking about gun safety. We need gun safety laws. And if you turn on the news, ABC, NBC, CNN, just go down the list, even Fox News, and they're, they're, they're calling gun control gun safety now. Who's opposed to gun safety, right? If you stand opposed to gun safety as a gun owner, then obviously you want your children dead. But it's not gun safety that they're proposing. There's no safety law that they're proposing. Like, you know, don't point the muzzle at something you don't intend to destroy, you know, basic firearm safety rules. Mm -hmm. No, what they're talking about is just taking things away making it harder to get things, making it impossible to get other things, and just outright banning things. That's what they always go to. Mm -hmm. And you brought up the, the Columbine incident. Well, actually, you brought up the, I'm sorry, the 1994 gun control bill that Bill mm -hmm. Clinton imposed as the assault weapons ban. Columbine, was my point, took place five years into that ban. A lot of good that ban did. Right. That was feel-good legislation that, that was set to expire 10 years later. So it, it went away in 1990, or I'm sorry, in 2004. It was in, imposed in 1994. But once again, you had this feel-good legislation that accomplished nothing. As a matter of fact, at the end of that law, when it sunset, the government did a study and they came to the conclusion that that law did nothing to deter, deter crime or anything whatsoever. It, it made no difference in anything. But now the anti-gunners are saying, well, the 1994 ban did all these incredible things. But you have your own government study that took place afterwards that said, yeah, this did nothing. Yeah, but they never look at facts. No. They never do. As a matter of fact, you could present all the facts in the world, and they just get angry at you and then wish violence upon you. I mean, that's just what I've noticed about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, when we were at, because we recently, like you said, just returned from, from Houston, and we did attend the NRA show. And I got to tell you, that was wild, looking yeah. out there at the protesters out there. And it wasn't like there was... 
I mean, there was maybe a few hundred of them out there or so, but still just the amount of people out there, because I was looking at maybe the smaller, the picture of things. I had an entire family out there, you know, husband, wife, and they're very small children. And I would have guessed probably ages five and older out there flicking me off, yelling cuss words at me. Yeah. Everything that you can imagine. I'm like, wow, that is a fantastic family dynamic right there. So you're basically got your family out here teaching them to hate other people out here. So we always want to sit here on the news and to preach unity, equality, whatever it may be. But we're always, we always see this come from the anti-gunners all the time. As a matter of fact, there was a guy talking about on some left-leaning uh, video gaming thing, I want to say it might have been. And I want to say Colleen O'War uh, found this thing. He was talking about they should bomb the building. So there was a big protest outside the NRA meeting, which was good. Do we have any insight into what they're actually talking about there at the NRA meeting that's today in Texas? Someone should bomb that building. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't. I'll roll that back. <laughs> roll that back immediately. <laughs> Everything but violence. She's <laughs> real right. time. <laughs> Let me run. You know what I mean? Because all the gun owners are there, nice central location, just bomb them all. And I'm like, why is it always them calling for violence? Right. Why? why? And we're painted as the violent ones. Right. So we went down to Houston to attend the primary arms shoot. And then since we were in town, we decided to swing by and uh, go by the, the NRA show for one day, actually mm -hmm. just for a few hours. I went by the PA booth, did a giveaway of one of their three power optics. And then we took off. But while we were there, that short period of time, that's when that, that protest was building. Now mm -hmm. other folks that were there the entire weekend, uh, that was their, their final destination. They posted you know, images and video all over social media of what was taking place throughout the weekend. Seems like they ran out of steam on Sunday. Okay. But um, you know, it, it was it was pretty wild. And like you said, we had seen stuff, you know, I'll throw up some pictures, but you know, F you uh, you know, signs that were saying this and then mm -hmm. of, of course people just screaming all sorts of vitriol, you know, laden with obscenities and threats. And the, the Houston police had put up a police line you know, horseback riders, uh, uh, police horseback riders, and then you had, you know, officers on every single corner. They had pretty much contained them on one side of the street. Right. But, um, and, and they did a good job of keeping them away from they the did. building. Houston PD did a great job. They did a great job. And these people were just unhinged. And yet, you know, you, you watch the people coming out of the show, the gun owners, and everybody is just relaxed and they're just looking at this insanity going on across the street. And we're painted as the violent ones. Mm -hmm. And yet there were no obscenities being shouted from the gun owner's side. There, there was no engagement whatsoever. We were just there like we were at the zoo looking at this insanity taking place in a cage mm -hmm. across the street. And like you said, they are violent. You take a look at, at, at any of the movements that we just came through out of the COVID the pandemic and then all the, the Flo George Floyd riots and all that stuff. The, the whole side of the spectrum, that political spectrum is violent. They burn cities, they do everything. And the media covers for them and says, oh, this is a mostly peaceful protest as their journalist is standing there in front of a burning building. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we go out and we, you know, fight for our rights and we go out to protest, we're painted as these crazy maniacs that, you know, have these crazy tools that are just intended for warfare only and they should not be in the hands of citizens and we're just these complete nutbags. And yet they won't cover honestly what's taking place. Domestic terrorists, that's what they call us essentially. Yes, we're domestic terrorists. Domestic terrorists. Even though we don't riot, we don't burn buildings, we don't loot towns, we don't do any of that. Mm -hmm. We're the domestic terrorists. And in the middle of all that that was going on for that entire year, the FBI doesn't issue a warning to be on the lookout for Antifa or anything like that. People are actually burning our cities. Mm -hmm. They say look for basically male gun owners. Yeah. The, we're, we're the ones that are the actual threat to national security. Yeah. No, I mean, they do this all the time. You know, and it's interesting because whenever I look at pictures of any of the firearms used on any of these types of incidents or anything, and I actually read about the, the person in which we won't say any of their names because no, we're not going to give them No, that's part of the any, problem. Exactly. Yeah. We're not going to give them any fame. Every time I look at the firearms used, they're set up in like a factory configuration, like the Daniel Defense stuff, that vert grip, the signature vert grip, all the way out to the front of the rail there. These things were not, the, the, these were not gun owners. These are not gun owners that are buying these things and doing these things. These are people that are going out to try to cause as much carnage as possible. As a matter of fact, I think the New York guy was probably a, the anti-gunner's wet dream, essentially. He did everything in his power to like stack up everything the anti-gunner crowd wants banned and utilized it. Yeah. 
Well, know? that leads to conspiracy theories and all sorts of stuff that we've seen. Well, exactly. I and, mean, you can get you into know. conspiracy theory stuff, but what I'm saying is, like, it's almost like the next guy is always trying to outdo the other guy. Well, and that all starts from what? Columbine. Columbine. That's an important point, right? And then we'll mm -hmm. get into some of our proposed solutions that would actually stop this particular type of violence right. and that, and that, and that in, in the school setting and stuff like that. But um, what, what were you just saying? Because so Columbine. Right, Columbine, I'm sorry. off the, the celebrity thing. Right, and that's, the, I think, one of the bigger problems that we face as a nation. People keep saying, well, why? When I was a child, we didn't have school shootings. It wasn't in the news. It didn't happen. And it, while there was violence in schools, it, it wasn't to the level that we see it today. That all changed in, in you know, the during the 1999 Columbine massacre. All of a sudden, you had two school shooters that, again, will go unnamed that carried out their heinous act. You had the 20, and, and keep in mind that the whole concept of 24-hour news cycles and cable news and having phones and devices that were constantly pumping news to a, a, an audience that was constantly consuming that information. In 1999, that was a relatively new concept. Right. You know, keep in mind the 80s and early 90s, people watched the evening news on a broadcast. It wasn't necessarily a cable. Cable was popular still in the 90s, but it, it was, a, you know, the evening news is where you got your news or the morning newspaper. But now we live in this this world where news is just thrust upon us. 24 hours a day, people are always on their phones. They're checking their, their PMs and they're checking their news. And this kind of, this hit during that transitional period where people were consuming news at this insatiable rate, right? And so the, the news to profit from this had to keep pumping out more and more information about what happened at Columbine. And so they investigated the guys that were involved in the shooting. They talked about the school. They talked about the victims. They talked about the families of the victims. They talked about the history of this and that. You had that idiot Michael Moore mm -hmm. permanently immortalizing these, these murderers in a movie, mm -hmm. Bowling for Columbine. Books, Books everything. everything. Magazines, print, you name it. And all that did was incentivize future would-be mass murderers to outdo them. Mm -hmm. Because almost every one of these school shooters at some point mentions... Columbine, the news cycle, the media, everything. They constantly dig into their back pasts, their lives and everything. They make celebrities out of them. And these kids that are deranged want their 15 minutes of fame and they know exactly how to get it. Mm -hmm. And the media then looks at us, the innocent gun owners, we're 99.9999% of our firearms and, and us and our community don't use our weapons for anything other than peaceful things. Mm -hmm. Self-protection, which is perfectly legitimate. Hunting, which they like to claim the Second Amendment's all about, but oh, it's God. not. You know, and, and collecting, whatever, comp competitive shooting, that's how we use our firearms. We shoot paper, but mm -hmm. we also have the right to defend ourselves in this nation. Absolutely. And so, you know, they, they constantly beat that drum and they turn these killers into celebrities, for a lack of a better term, what we normally call infamous, not famous, but infamous. But that's inspiring the next generation. So I think that's one of the biggest things that changed is the 24-hour news cycle and the desire to constantly one-up the other news organizations on what you can unearth about these people, what you can unearth about this, that, or the other, mm -hmm. and ultimately culminating in this ridiculously poor taste movie that made these two killers celebrities and permanently cement them in American culture, which will then carry on that tradition of these school shooters constantly trying to outdo what was done at Columbine. All right, and they do this stuff. And now lately you see it that every time any type of incident happens whatsoever, what's the first thing people are looking for? What weapon did he use? You know what I mean? They're right. always looking for you know, that weapon so they can blame the weapon. Think back to, I don't know if you may remember this. Remember Cecil the Lion, the yeah. dentist, right? Yeah, right, right. So instantly, they did not even look at the firearm used in that whatsoever. They went straight for that dentist. They wanted his head on a spike. Yeah. Right? Anytime a shooter uses a weapon, what do they go for? The gun. Every right. single time. They never go for the person. They never go behind. The gun is this inanimate object. It is a tool. It needs people kill people. Right. right? And so when you look at Cecil the Lion, that dentist got, oh, we want that dentist. We want him fired we want whatever this set and the other Didn't for those that are watching gun. don't know what jason's talking about he's talking about a a dentist that went on a safari and shot yep. a lion that was in a questionable area that was not really um supposed to be shot or something i, I didn't I, get the whole story maybe exactly it, right it was I tagged he, or something i think but, he did it in legal legal manner you know right. what i mean like and so basically everybody wanted his head on a spike because he shot this lion right, right? and so but they didn't look at the gun in that aspect they, they you know they looked at 
him as a person. Right. right? Now you get these people out here using guns, using incidents, and the, mer- the first thing they turn to, what gun? Gun, 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 gun. It's always right. the, the gun. So. Well, the same thing. When, when somebody runs over a bunch of people in a crowd with a car, they don't talk about the car. They talk about the person. Mm-hmm. Now, in this most recent incident, they didn't even want to talk about the person. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. Right? That drives Be- me mad. But Yeah. So, but, you know, you talk about drunk driving, and, and drunk drivers kill far more people in this country every year than, than rifles like the AR-15 do. Hands and fists kill more people every year in this country than rifles like the AR-15 do. But they never want to talk about the alcohol, the car. In that instance, they want to talk about the driver, right? That they put the blame where it belongs in that case. Right. But anytime uh, somebody kills somebody, it's immediately, well, let's talk about the gun. Yep. Let's yep. not talk about the killer. Let's talk about the gun. And how do we get rid of them? And how do we get rid of them? That's what they do all the time. And we already know, if you take a look at, at nations that have done these bans, it doesn't stop violence. No. It just makes innocent civilians victims. You get rid of guns, and then they use knives. Then they try to get rid of knives, yep. and they use ball bats. And they get rid of ball bats, and they use cars. Evil people will find a way to commit their evil acts. It is up to people like you and I and others to be vigilant, to be looking out for these people, and to also, you're responsible for your own safety. I don't know how many times you've got to nail it home. The pandemic will tell you that. When cities were burning, all this stuff was going on. People realized the they were The police, yeah. the government basically said, good luck. And that's why we had tons of people buying firearms lately, not just to protect their toilet paper stash, but to also defend their yeah. homes. Right from people that were just going out causing carnage to cause carnage. And the government literally stepped back and said, yep. we can't stop this. Yeah, they were abandoning police precincts. They were just, you yeah. know, they were just overwhelmed. So, and that's something people got to get through into their heads. You were responsible for your safety. You are. That's why I carry a gun every single day. That's why I watch and I'm vigilant when I've got my family out, right? Anytime. And yeah, it's, it's I'm sure people just want to live in this society where the government just, you know, govern me harder is going to watch your back all the time. It's not the case. No, you you are your own first responder. So once again, we have this whole cycle of proposed gun bans, mm-hmm. or let's they're calling it gun safety laws or whatever they want to they want to call it. They got to get some buzzwords in there to right. get people. To- well, they have to deflect, right? They don't they don't want to tell you what they're actually doing. That's the silent part. You don't say out loud. They've been caught on hot mic moments and things like that. The anti gunners, they really do want to take your guns away. Oh yeah. But they say, nobody's coming for your guns. They paint you as a lunatic. Nobody's coming for your guns. We just want sensible gun legislation. We want sensible gun safety laws. We just sensible, 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 yeah. right? There's nothing sensible about what they're proposing. They're lying to you and they're trying to incrementally get to a point where they can just identify you through registration and then confiscate what you have. Yeah, Beto is a perfect because example of that with your, heck yes, I'm going to take your, he was the only one that actually got straight up Oh, but he even walked there. that back. <laughs> now that he was running for governor of Texas, yeah. he walked that back. If you looked at his website, he walked that back. And you see this on the way back machine. He walked that back about we're taking the AR-15s to we just want sensible gun controls. Ah. And then after the Gilberti shooting, now he's back to, yes, yes, we're going to take your AR-15s. He changed his website. Gotcha. See, these politicians have to hide their true intentions because if they tell you what they really want to do, the, mo- the majority of American public is going to go, whoa, 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 wait a minute, what? No, 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 no. We don't want that. Mm-hmm. But who can be opposed to gun safety? They, ha- they must have these think tanks that sit around and go, okay, they just throw out phrases and catchphrases and terms, and they try to find things that are deceiving that people can't stand in opposition to without making themselves look bad. Right. And so when we say we're opposed to gun safety laws, we look like the lunatics. And that's the whole point, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's where they're going with this. Now we have the weak-kneed Republicans doing, once again, what they were going to do after the Vegas shooting, which we stopped through contacting our representatives and that's what we need to do now because Mitch McConnell, once again, he decided he's going to have a discussion with the anti-gunners in Congress. And he said, go sit down with the Democrats and compromise on something and come back to me with some sort of legislation proposal, which will probably amount to red flag laws, maybe an extension of background checks or something that's seemingly harmless that they think that they can get away with without having to face their voters. Right. I don't think the Republicans would go so far as to support a ban of any type, but they're going to agree to some sort of incremental legislation, which is still one step in the wrong direction right. that they think that they can go back to their constituents and say, we don't really want your take your guns away, but we did support sensible gun safety. You know, because red and, flag laws wouldn't be used against those, you know, uh, 
an upset girlfriend wanting to take your guns away or an upset family member right. because you to be didn't, didn't mow their wife. grass or whatever, right? So, right. I mean, you know, red flag laws have their their things where people will definitely abuse that system. And it's so funny that they, all these laws that they want to talk about and propose would have stopped nothing. 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 Right. No, nothing that they're gonna, they've talked about thus far mm -hmm. would have nothing. changed anything. So what would have changed something, right? So let's, this is the meat of the conversation. All right. We already know the gun laws aren't going to change the outcome. Nothing they've ever proposed in my lifetime would have changed one thing that's happened, right? Mm -mm. So what can we do that would, that would actually secure our schools so that these madmen can't carry out their acts, right? So we take a look at what the Israelis have done. Their schools were being attacked on a regular basis, and they decided to lock their schools down. They put armed guards in their schools, and guess what? We don't hear about mass murders taking place in Israeli schools anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Warren, along with an, another Democrat or two, introduced legislation in 2020 that would ban school resource officers, armed officers from being on the premises of schools and being federally funded. It almost sounds like they want- They want these they things want to happen. these things to happen so that they it, can push their agenda. Bingo. Yeah. They say we have a bloodlust but it is the anti-gunners with the true bloodlust because Elizabeth Warren has to know in her heart of hearts, assuming she has a heart, that putting police officers in schools that are armed and trained is the solution. She proposed the counter solution, which would just invite more carnage. Mm -hmm. So she could get what she wants, which is a one party rule. That's what she's going for, Yeah. right? So it's absolutely asinine for us not to consider the option of arming school officers. I go so far as to support arming teachers. I know some people in the gun community think that's crazy. I don't, if teachers wanna step forward and volunteer, they, they most certainly are on the front lines of defending yeah. our schools. We are the, I mean, we, I think parents should have firearms, right? I think parents should be able to carry firearms on a school premises, right? Yeah. These stupid, I mean, think about this. Our president is protected by firearms. The Congress critters that are proposing anti-gun laws are protected by firearms. Governors are protected by firearms. Everything's protected by firearms. Banks are protected by firearms. Airports are protected by firearms. Everything that is secure in the United States is protected by people with firearms. But for some reason, when you go to a school, you have a big sign that says, this is a gun-free zone. Yeah. Basically, welcome to the slaughterhouse. Yeah. We got nothing inside here that's gonna deter you one inch from what you're about to do. I know they want to go through like it shoots you in the face for 20 bucks from a bank. You know what I mean? Like right. the politicians, as a matter of fact, they want to go ahead and propose billions of dollars to be used to up armor more of their stuff. You know what I mean? They run around in motorcades with all the police around them and armored vehicles and all that. Like you said, guns, armored vehicles, everything blowing stoplights. They get free will to go travel wherever they want to, but your schools gun free zone, you know, as long as the schools go as far as one entrance, one exit, I right. heard about the, the door apparently unlocked in this thing, in an area where it wasn't supposed to be unlocked. You know what I mean? So there's until I have all of the facts, I don't want to get into too much of the details of it. But firearms, we have school resource officers at my school. I love them. I'm, I'm happy that they're there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I actually thank God every day that they're there doing their job. You know, right. and I've talked to them. I've asked, what training are you doing? What are you guys doing? And they train all the time. As a matter of fact, any abandoned buildings in the area, they go through and they train in those those buildings. But they also for, train in the schools right. after hours, I know. Exactly. Because I've been present with some of my friends. And so I'm always curious that. just to ask, you know, what yeah. they do and things like that. So I'm happy to see that. But again, like you said, welcome to the slaughterhouse. You know, like there's nothing to protect the kids. Right. They don't do anything. They want to keep it completely open because they want to push their agenda when we know the solution is to take some of that money you're giving away as foreign aid. Think about all the money we wasted during the pandemic, the billions that went unaccounted for. Mm -hmm. And if we had taken that money, there are about 25,000 schools in this nation, right? And you want to put a couple of officers in each one, we could have easily funded that. Yeah. Easily funded that. But instead, we want to talk about, no, we really want to save lives. We want to do this by banning firearms or further restricting lawful owners of firearms. And that's not going to change anything. We just have that video that, that recently I saw on social media of a guy with a bow and arrow that killed a bunch of people walking through a building. I think it was overseas. I'm going to have to look that one up. I'll see if I can find the video. Yeah. And either link to it or throw it up in this video. But, um, but he was, had a, 
obviously, a, a, you saw the video when, mm -hmm. while we were driving. I pulled it up and showed it to you. That was a deranged man that just deranged, walked in there. Had for... a quiver, had a, had a recurve bow, and he's just walking through a building. Just and firing he was an arrows. archer. Oh, you, you could tell, tell by well the trained. equipment that yeah. he had. That man knew exactly how to utilize that equipment. Yep. He had that, that arrow knocked incredibly fast after he fired an arrow and was mm -hmm. just systematically walked through the building shooting people with an arrow. And you wouldn't even hear that. Nope. You would have no idea that was taking place in the room next door to you. Nope. Right. But, hey, you know, they probably should. Well, let's just ban, ban, ban bows, bows and arrows, yeah. right? That, that's the, the solution. solution. Always the solution. Not putting ban, an armed ban, guard ban. there that would have ended it before it even started. Let's just ban, 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 ban until we just live in a bubble, which is exactly what the government tried to do to us during the whole COVID thing. Just mm -hmm. go home, lock yourselves in your house and live in a bubble. And now we got everything. We'll take care of it from here on out. Oh, yeah. And now we're paying the, the, the piper for that one. Our mm -hmm. entire economy is falling apart now. Yep. And so we have the solution. The solution isn't to disarm anybody. The solution is to put armed guards in those schools, to have serious security protocols that are followed strictly, like you said, one point of entry, and have armed people standing there. And I guarantee you that would make an immediate difference. The second that was implemented in schools across this nation, it would make an immediate difference. We would, we would not see these things happening. Yep. Because most of these, you know, cowards that are doing this stuff, most of these shooters that do this stuff, as a matter of fact, once they see a response come at them, it's almost like they... We've seen the one. They'll bail. They'll they'll either they'll bail, get they'll commit suicide, yep. or they'll, they won't uh, even attempt. They'll drop their guns and 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 throw up their hands and give up. Right. But in every inst every instance, every instance where something bad happens like this, it is a good person with a gun that puts it to an end. Mm -hmm. Now people are going to scratch their head and say, "What? Yes, citizens. There are plenty of examples of citizens. It just recently happened with a female. Uh, some birthday party was getting shot at, and she pulled her concealed carry handgun and ended the shooting. And the the, he, the shooter didn't hurt anybody. So yes, we as armed citizens do inter interdict and stop these people as well. But police officers count. They're civilians too. They're not mm -hmm. military." So when a police officer shows up to end this thing, that is a good person with a gun. Yeah. But the media won't doesn't make that distinction. They put the police in the military group, the government group, and they don't see that they don't count that as a civilian use of a, of a firearm. But it is because police are civilians. So good people with guns are how almost every one of these incidents are resolved, mm -hmm. either by an armed parent, an armed somebody nearby, or the police. That's how this ends. So the solution is to put that there in in a in a way that stops it before it starts. Mm -hmm. Don't react with that response. Start off with that response. Arm that school and put armed officers there and teachers that want to take on that responsibility. And I guarantee you, these coward school shooters will stop their activities. Right. They just simply will. You've got to make it impossible for them to do it. We're making it all too easy for them. And the anti-gunners are, are, instead of trying to stop school shootings, they're doing everything they can to increase them apparently because they care nothing about our children. All they care about is their political agenda and disarming you and I. And, I and, if, and if children have to die to get it done, they're more than happy to do it. it, it they don't even wait till the bodies are cold before they jump in front of a camera and start pushing their political agenda on us. I know, every single and time. And we need to hold them accountable and say, why aren't we arming our schools? Why aren't we arming our teachers? Why do we continue to let our children sit out there and be you know, lambs waiting for the slaughter? Right. Why and put signs funding? on the building saying, come on in. Why do we waste funding on all sorts of stupid things when that funding can actually go to improve things right. or defend things, you know, like especially our children? I defend my family, and I, you know, it's, we talk about this all the time. Anytime we have firearms in our home, we work with firearms a lot, I'm sure, as most of you know. We work with firearms on a daily basis. What I find interesting is none of our, our children could care less about if the firearm, and they're not left out, they're always locked up. But if it was, they're not eager to touch it. They're not eager. They're like, eh, my kids see me with a gun every day because we and it just, teach them safety. Right. We we take them out shooting. We take that curiosity thing away from there. You know what I mean? That's it. And we and we're always teaching safety, safety, safety. If you want to teach real safety, why isn't this brought up in school? Well, see, know, that's what I don't, why I don't isn't get. There safety classes in school in terms of this is you know a firearm. This is what you do. These are the rules of gun safety. No, right? They should. There are as many p guns in this country as there are people, right. and it is completely abhorrent to me that they won't allow firearm safety training in schools. They'll teach your grade schooler to put a condom on a banana, yeah, but they won't let them get gun safety training. No, when in all likelihood, a good majority of those kids have parents at home with firearms. Mm -hmm. So they, we should be teaching them. What do you do if you encounter a firearm? Right. Like like you said, my kids are just indifferent to the presence of firearms. Mm -hmm. Daddy's always armed. I always have a handgun on me. They see it. 
And, you know, it, it's just to them, we've taken that curiosity, like you said, away. Mm -hmm. There's no curious anything there. If one of my boys say to me, Dad, I want to go shoot, grab a rifle, go out in the backyard, start yeah. shooting. Safety. Scratch that edge. Go out, like you said. Yep. Teach the safety rules. Go out and shoot. Have a good time. Yep. Unload and clear. Go home. Pack up. Safe. And they're back to safe being just regular range. kids. Yep. Right? And... Yeah, so that's a whole different aspect of another conversation that I'd love to have at another one of these roundtables. And we've, we're going to start calling these roundtables, guys, because that's what you've named them. We're actually at a square table, mm -hmm. but we're going to call these roundtable discussions going forward because I think that we, we were able to get a lot of good information out there. Uh, we've had a lot of responses from our audience saying that they enjoy this format. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to continue to throw these into the mix. Jason, you know, thank you for, again, for everything that you do. Jason is the cameraman at the Military Arms Channel, um, you know, the magic behind the camera that you guys see. And it's good to have you out in front of the camera every once in a while because Jason has a you know, really good perspective on a lot of these things, including what we're talking about again today. If you guys would like to support us at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Follow that link, join our family. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me. I answer all private communications. Also right here on YouTube, you've got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care, guys.